Hydrofracking New York, from one New Yorker to another, by Mike Varley. Job creation. Job creation is cited by hydrofracking boosters as one of the prime draws to the process. In a recent study released by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, or DEC, job creation ranges from a low-end estimate of 13,500 jobs to an average estimate of 54,000 jobs. Of this average estimate, 25,000 jobs would be directly attributed to the gas companies, and 29,000 would be indirect employment jobs. This job growth projection would amount to 0.7% of the current New York workforce. Our neighbors to the south in Pennsylvania have been in the fracking business for several years now. A report done by the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry identified six core and 21 ancillary industries related to fracking the Marcellus Shale. In these industries, 48,000 new hires were reported from fourth quarter 2009 through first quarter 2011. While championed by gas companies, new hires is a misleading statistic. The number of new hires remains the same even if, in the same span of time, large numbers of jobs are eliminated by other employers, say, for instance, if a local well has passed its peak employment needs. In this instance, new hires may be less a sign of employment growth than employment shuffling. The same report puts employment growth in these identified core and ancillary industries at 10,600 from first quarter 2008 to third quarter 2010, or a little more than 0.15% of the total New York workforce. However, the report is quick to point out that, quote, while the vast majority of Marcellus Shale employment can be found in these industries, not all establishments in these industries are involved in Marcellus Shale. In other words, you might live in Flushing Meadows, but that doesn't necessarily make you a Mets fan. Another question to consider is how long do these jobs last? Most hydrofracking companies state that shale gas wells have a 30 to 40 year production life, but preliminary studies from Texas suggest otherwise. The average commercial life of a well in the Barnett Shale Formation is 7.5 years, with the most common commercial life being 4 years. Some wells reach 8 to 12 years of production, but few eclipse even half the industry's estimate at 15 years. All this shuffling employment and short-lived commercial viability is a recipe for boom towns, and indeed the effects are already being seen in Pennsylvania. In Bradford County, the state's most heavily mined county, DUI arrests are on a pace to rise 40% in 2011, after rising 60% the year before. Sentences for criminal offenses were also up 35% in 2010. The influx of migrant workers, mostly single men from states more experienced in gas drilling, equates to an anonymity that makes them feel above the law, and spending habits focused on entertainment rather than services that build community. In contrast, consider the jobs we already have in the southern tier potentially threatened by hydrofracking. The Finger Lakes region, home to 7% of the world's fresh water, accounts for 25,000 tourism and scenic beauty jobs and $500 million of income. Agriculture and food processing accounts for 19,000 jobs and another $700 million in income. All of these are stable jobs easily accessible to locals, and designed to keep the generated income in-state and in-community. It is unlikely that hydrofracking will cause a loss of more than a handful of these jobs in the immediate term. But ask yourself this. It will only take one newsworthy contamination incident to destroy both industries forever. Is this constant looming threat worth a 0.15% decrease in New York's unemployment? <laughs>